That's the skyline of Louisville. On this side of the city is the Ohio River. It's running pretty high right now, but this is just a trickle compared to what used to be here. About 400 million years ago in the Devonian age, this entire area was covered by a tropical sea. If you have any doubts, just look at the fossilized remains of some of those prehistoric sea creatures. Inside this rock is a 387 million year old snail. And this is a fossilized colonial coral head from the same period. Also in this area, you can find the remains of some of the mammals who came after the seas receded. This is the tooth of a woolly mammoth. It's a relative youngster, only about 12,000 years old. And now in some other parts of the world, there are new rare fossil finds that are electrifying the scientific community. They're unhatched dinosaur eggs. On the outside, they look like ordinary rocks, but inside are actual dinosaur embryos. Up next on Explorer Journal, we're going on assignment with National Geographic photographer, Luis Ahoyas. His beat is dinosaurs, his mission to crack the case for the prehistoric eggs. I've been photographing dinosaurs for about six years now, and I, I see it as sort of the very beginning of the legacy that I'm going to leave behind for the planet. That's definitely a passion. Nothing sort of gets me worked up like photographing these things and bringing them back to life. So it's like, to me, it's, I'm on a mission. I'm Luis Sahoyas, and I'm about to head out on a story for National Geographic magazine on dinosaur eggs and babies. And this is just the beginning. Usually when you're working with National Geographic, you have the luxury of an incredible amount of time to bring the story in. Uh, here, when you need the pictures back in the office in about eight days, that means I have to go completely around the world at four countries, three continents, 24 time zones, and take seven masterpieces. Good question. I think it's 15. <laughs> it's a pretty impossible job, but I told them I could do it, so um, there's a lot riding on this week. Yeah, I've got my assistant, John Canever. He's been with me for 15 years. He's the only person on the planet that I know that's crazy enough to come along with me. Around the world, eight days instead of 80. How time do you change? Yeah, first officer Ray Gijarita and the entire flight crew. It's my pleasure to welcome you on board our flight this morning. Dinosaur eggs have been around for a long time, but for the first time, we're seeing which dinosaurs belong to those eggs, because now they're finding babies inside. And that's, that's my story, is to, you know, to go on the great dinosaur egg hunt and find these, these babies that are popping up all over the world. We're in a hurry, and it's a good thing that we're in Montana, because they just revoked the 55 mile an hour speed limit. We're going to visit uh, Jack Horner in Bozeman, Montana. He's the guy that started it all. He's the first one to find dinosaur babies inside of eggs. Are these crushed or these? They're, they're crushed yeah, from the other side. This is the downside. The doing a story on baby dinosaurs without photographing Jack Horner would be like doing a story about baseball without Babe Ruth. Or talking about rock and roll without talking about the Beatles. Jack Horner was the man who started it all. What it look like? Here's some of the baby stuff we found on them. He's the character that inspired the character in Jurassic Park. So every, every couple of years I'll stop by Jack's workshop to see what he's up to. And this is, this is a hypacrosaur. So this is, this is the same as the one we were looking at the CAT scan, huh? except this is a nestling. Cute, isn't it? He's cute. He's cute. <laughs> cute. 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 This is cute. That's good. I think I have uh, the quintessential shot here of Jack uh, looking like the proud father of a dinosaur. Just down the road from Jack Horner is Matt Smith, a sculptor who uh, we've commissioned to make baby dinosaurs to see what they look like once they just hatched out of the eggs. It's asking too much for the reader to imagine what this thing looked like with flesh on. And that's his job, is quite simply to give this thing a, a, a feeling, to give it a personality.
I mean, you're gonna you look at that that little mousasaur and you're gonna want to pet it. We're trying to show the the mousasaur, the mouse lizard, off in the best possible light. We're trying to show uh, Matt's uh, hard work. Trying to get all the little nuances that can only be achieved through lighting. Get all the little wrinkles. Um, not get too many wrinkles, but <laughs> get just enough so it looks like uh, what he intended it to do. Oh, I just brought the light down low. <laughs> he really looks goofy. Take a look at his mouth. He's got this massive overbite. <laughs> what else can I do with that? Mm. What about scale? I don't think we need scale in this. Okay. I mean, what would we run for scale? You have a mouse. We have a mouse. Do you have a mouse? <laughs> That's the only thing we don't have. No. I oh, this would be skull. great. We need a mouse. A mouse skull is okay, but nobody will know what a mouse skull looks like. Is there a pet store around here? Yeah. In town? Yeah. Yeah, oh. just right down the street. Come on. That way. I think a sense of humor is about the most important thing I can bring to a photograph. What the heck is that? <laughs> that was good. If you can get somebody to laugh at something, you can get them engaged in the subject. Oh, wow. <laughs> Once you laugh at that mouse is far, people are gonna wanna go back and read the story, read the caption, find out more about it. But it's the humor that snagged them in the first place. We're going to uh, England, and we go to China right afterwards. Uh, we land. On Saturday morning, Saturday, Sunday evening, we take off for China. My passport is uh, absolutely full. There's not room for one more entry. The China visa was absolutely the last time I could go anywhere. <laughs> there probably isn't a place to stamp it in England. There's wonderful science being done at museums and universities all around the world, but there's some fascinating stuff happening in small little villages. In Leicester, England, in this unassuming townhouse, Terry Manning is producing some of the finest science done by an individual. Terry, to me, sort of, in my mind, he conjures up all the images I have of a mad scientist. He's got these 50 embryos percolating in this mild acid solution up in his attic. What's inside are little tiny baby dinosaur embryos. It's like a little time capsule of what a baby dinosaur would look like exactly. This is wild. What do you think, Greg? <laughs> I think you have this mad scientist thing down quite well. This is great. It's a three-day cycle, and over that three-day period, you'll etch away about two thousandths of an inch. So. So it's a, it's a very, very slow process. Two thousandth of an inch every three days? Every, every three days. So... Uh, so how long will an egg take to uh, dissolve? Um, to take the rock away that we want to take away, um, it'll take most probably six to nine months. First of all, he's got the most amazing eggs in the world. They've been called better specimens than Archaeopteryx. Then we find out that he has egg yolk. Now we just find out he, he, he thinks he has dinosaur skin. And uh, it's 1.30 and Terry has to go bowling at 8 o'clock. So we're, uh, we're under the gun here to try to get some good stuff in a very short yeah. amount of time. It's a little scary. Um, is it the right way? We have an hour and 15 minutes before our flight takes off for China, and we're stuck in one traffic jam right after the other. Um, that's what's going on. 10, 10, minutes. can you spell the name of the airline again? We missed our flight. It throws off the schedule completely. We might miss our deadline. It's going to be Monday. We don't know if we can get a flight out. We don't know if there are flights out. We are booking the right day. And it's looking pretty grim. Yeah. I don't know. What is today? I have no idea. It's December. I know it because I see Christmas decorations all around. We've heard about this giant egg nest in China that's supposed to be about seven and a half feet in diameter. The biggest nest ever been found. I promised the Chinese that I would be there on time. Now we're going to be, looks like, 24 hours late. 
And if we don't get it, we essentially don't have a, a major part of the story. It's incredibly important to get to China. We finally got here. We're in Henan province in central China. It's a thrill just to be in a foreign environment, knowing that right up ahead is this incredible, incredible specimen. We're hoping to see this huge, giant nest of eggs, beautifully prepared. And we, we get there, and it looks like a, a waterbed. The lighting is awful. It's a hideous environment. It's, we're cold, we're freezing, and quite frankly, I want to go home. <laughs> It's, again, it's one of those situations where it doesn't look that good, you know? Just looking at the piece, it doesn't look spectacular. It is spectacular, but we want those sort of naugahyde edges of the, the nest that they've built to go away. And uh, so the way to do it is to photograph it from straight up, looking straight down. How many shots did you get? All the electricity's off in the village. It's completely out. Nobody has electricity. Um, we've managed to scavenge this diesel-powered generator and uh, hopefully it'll give us enough power to get my, my strobes working. Uh, can you, uh, excuse me. Uh, can, can you move down just about this much? Down. Yeah. Yeah, just like this. Uh, Things were going well, probably too well. <laughs> then disaster strikes. I just got a couple shots off before the generator fried my light kit. Uh, pack just blew. Brand new seven thousand dollar pack. I think we got it. <laughs> it's actually kind of pretty. Is it worth seven thousand dollars, huh? <laughs> 48 hours later, we're back on a plane. In the meantime, I have to get new lights because I can't photograph without lights. Yeah, I think we're pushing 500,000 miles at this point. We accumulated all of our miles together, maybe more. All for the love of old dead things. <laughs> Luck has followed us to Canada. We've arrived on the coldest day of the year to a raging blizzard. The whole trip has just become a series of pictures right now. I'm just thinking about, I have six done and I have one more to go. Like the Terminator, sort of. That is so cute. Brian Cooley is as passionate as anybody I've ever met about the subject of dinosaurs. He is a person that's able to get into a dinosaur skeleton and flesh it out like nobody I've ever seen before. Because these aren't precious, okay? I can make another egg, so don't sweat it. If I had to imagine what a baby dinosaur embryo would look like, Brian's done it. This is it. I mean, he's really created here my vision of what a dinosaur would look like you can almost hear the thing breathing as you look at it. I just love this. Well, it's coming to, the whole story is coming to life for me now. I mean, all of a sudden, those beautiful eggs that are wonderful just the way they are, now you have a shot right next to it where it just comes to life. It's like the last piece of the puzzle is found, you know, when you're doing the jigsaw puzzle, the thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> Finally, you get the chance to see what it looks like. In the back of my mind, I, I realized that we went through quite a bit to get this stuff in a short amount of time, and it was a heroic effort. The readers of the magazine will never notice that, and nor I don't think they should care about that. But it is a great satisfaction to actually see the work published. To me, it's more than just a, a matter of a collection of pictures. It's a legacy I'm building. I want to leave behind a great body of work that shows our natural history of the planet 
and to try to get a sense of wonder to everybody of what came before us.